Today we're excited to introduce the newest addition to Lloyd's safety scanner lineup, the RSL 200 series safety laser scanners. These scanners are something special. The 200 series isn't just the newest, it's also the smallest laser scanner on the market. But don't let the size fool you, it's packed with high-end features that make it ideal for compact installations and mobile equipment. The RSL 200 and its big brother, the RSL 400, both use the same intuitive, easy to navigate software. The RSL 200 is optimized for tight, precision applications, offering an even wider 270 70 degree field of view, a 3 meter protective field, and a refresh rate of up to 50 milliseconds, making it one of the most responsive scanners available today. One standout upgrade is the improved optical balance, a key advantage for mobile applications like AGVs and AMRs. This enhancement helps the scanner maintain reliable performance, even under vibration or constant movement. When it comes to connectivity, the RSL is ready for just about any setup. Depending on the model, you'll have USB, Bluetooth, Ethernet, and even app-based smartphone connectivity, making integration and troubleshooting fast and reliable. There are four models in the RSL 200 series. We'll start with the entry-level models, the RSL 210 and RSL 220. Both come standard with Bluetooth and USB connectivity, and each has four configurable outputs. The key differences lie in the field configurability. The RSL 210 supports just one switchable protective field slash warning field, making it a great economical option for fixed zone applications. The RSL 220, on the other hand, gives you eight switchable field configurations, offering much more flexibility for dynamic or changing environments. Next up is the RSL 230 and RSL 235, the high performance models in the series. Both scanners come equipped with eight configurable outputs and support an impressive 32 switchable protective slash warning fields. This makes them a great fit for applications requiring adaptive safety zones or complex safety logic. If you're working in mobile robotics, the RSL 235 goes a step further. It includes advanced UDP data, making it ideal for high precision navigation and localization in autonomous systems like AGVs and AMRs. Now that we've looked at the hardware, let's jump into the software. The RSL 200 series uses the same powerful user-friendly configuration software as RSL 400 series. So if you're familiar with Lloyd's existing platform, this shouldn't look too different. So once we hop over here on the software, you're gonna see this. So if you've used the 400 series, this is gonna look very similar. It's gonna take you to the identification tab. So this is gonna show you what device you're connected to. Uh, so if we click here, we can see that this is uh, RSL 230. So this is uh, the option that has 32 different configurable uh, switching fields. Uh, once we head over to the process tab, this is what's different about this sensor versus the RS400 is we actually have uh, front window status uh, option. So what this does is actually shows us uh, how dirty our lens is and where the dirt is on our lens. So if you have fingerprints, smudge, dust, you name it, it's gonna show that. So they're measuring this in general pollution degree. So if this gets above 30%, there's a small LED on the front of this uh, sensor here and that will turn solid, letting us know that uh, it needs to be cleaned. So if I put my finger here on the lens, you're gonna see right where my finger is and it's gonna go now above. So if we get above that 50% uh, uh, level there, it's actually gonna turn off our OSSDs. So that's gonna fault out the sensor and you're gonna to have to actually go out, out there and clean it. But you can obviously hop on here and see where it is and where the issue is on the lens. If you guys ever need to replace the lens, this whole upper unit pops off. Uh, and you can just buy a new head for this and put it on. So the next area here, we can see inputs. Uh, so we can see all the different inputs and what they're set as. Uh, if you guys use the UDP option, that's the two RSL 235. Uh, this is the information you use for setting up the UDP data. Um, and then the other thing here is the, the sensor status. So this is the first thing that popped up. So this right here is uh, showing us what the sensor currently sees. So you can kind of see the room I'm in, it's boxing it out. If I move my hand around, you're gonna see my hand uh, is moving around that area there. For configuration, so we can uh, name this. Uh, we can put a description of the application. Device parameters, so this is where we would come and set the resolution. So we can do a 50 or 75 millimeter resolution. Uh, we can also put the vehicle speeds. So if you're doing an AGV or AMR application, we can actually set the speed on here. Uh, the response time, so that's how fast the sensor is gonna respond. So we have right now set to 50, uh, 150, but you can get that all the way down to 50 milliseconds. Uh, and then right here is the start behavior. So I have it set up in an automatic restart. So if you wanted to have a manual restart, we can adjust that and change that there. Uh, and then in the re restart time. So restart time is gonna be once the sensor is clear and ready to go, it's gonna take 150 milliseconds for the sensor actually to fully reboot again. All right, so now moving to the configuration area. So right here we have uh, the configuration area. I have uh, 
kind of just a general configuration setup here. I'm going to delete those. So we should have to delete those. I'll show you guys. So you guys can kind of see. So setting up uh, you know, your zones, your protective zone, and your, your warning zones is really simple with this. Uh, right now, I'll just click the protective zone. And then we're going to go over to our options here. So we can do polygons, rectangles. Um, there's a diff different couple options there. I personally prefer the polygon. So that allows us to just click data points. So if we want to box out uh, like a post, you can easily just click around and box it out. We can set it up and we do the same thing for the warning field. So we can just click wherever we want, set up a warning field. And there you go, you just set up your field. Um, so this one, since I mentioned, has 32 different uh, configurable protective warning fields. We can actually just add those. So I can add, add a new field, I'll close that out. So now you can easily see that I have a, a new field for this. So if you want to switch to a different field, this, like I said, the 230 is going to give you 32 different fields that you can switch in between. So the next thing here is the diagnostics. The diagnostics allows us to see any errors we have. We can search a certain error. We can see what time the error happened. Uh, we can also see the access list, so we can see who's been logging onto this device and making any kind of changes. Uh, the last area here is settings, so this is where we can actually name this specific sensor, what machine it's on. Um, we can see uh, monitor signals on this device. We can change the passwords. And we can also see the status of the, the, the lens on here too, so it gives you a condition of how the lens is. So that's just a general quick overview of the software. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your local NEF representative. If you guys have any questions about anything else NEF can do for you, head over to nefautomation.com. Thanks for watching.